not, not live. Okay, cool. Hmm. Oh, that was an awful practice run. Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. Oh, there we are. Oh! I think we're there in. There's a bit of a delay. <laughs> And by a bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> oh, sorry, but we are live now. Um, sorry about that. A few technical difficulties in terms of uh, the YouTube back and forth there. Sorry about that, everyone. Let's, um, we'll start this again for anybody watching. Uh, so hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday gear show. Uh, if you're joining us, hello and welcome. If you're skiving off work, congratulations. It is Friday after It is all. lunch break. It is lunch break, that's true. If you're in the UK, if you're in Europe, say hello, join us in the live chat. Uh, Hugo will be monitoring the live chat, so any questions you have, uh, he'll be looking at that. And Therese has got it up on screen as well, of course. So we're talking about winter climbing, alpine winter climbing. And I know you guys have seen a lot of videos of us smashing around the Alps in summer, but there are differences between uh, summer climbing and winter climbing. And that's what we'll be going through today. And more specifically, we're talking about Scotland and the Alps because things do change a lot. And especially the gear, we have a selection for both of them. Obviously, they cross into each other because it's still winter, it's still freezing temperatures and ice. Um, but yeah, let's get going. Where shall we start? Well, let's start off with showing hopefully some psych photos. I'm going to switch oh. things around uh -huh. and hopefully you'll be able to see uh, my screen there nice and big. Uh, let us know if you can see that. Um, we've got a few kind of psych pictures coming up on screen that hopefully will pop up in a couple of minutes if you're watching us because I don't know about you, but I have always watched videos of the Alps of Scotland and there's such a difference between them in terms of style uh, that it's worth sort of pointing out some of the differences in terms of the pictures. Uh, so hopefully there you go up on screen you can see uh, we've got pictures from Hamish Frost, a fantastic photographer. Uh, there he is smashing about in the Alps. Uh, a few more coming up uh, as we can see if it loads up. Uh, so. Scottish winter climbing, a lot of verglass on the rock itself, a lot of iced up cracks, steep vertical terrain. Uh, and as you can see from that, some really quite serious moments hanging out there in the middle of nowhere and usually in the middle of a snowstorm uh, in oh, Scotland. Don't you just wait for a sunny good day like here? Well, that is an important <laughs> fact uh, to talk about because people do tend to go out in Scotland. With a storm. In the I, I have this story, right, and I hope you'll indulge me here. So I went up during a university trip. We went to Scotland. We were in a minivan in the car park uh, to walk into uh, Schnechter, which is an area. Mm. It was so windy that when we took off the handbrake on the minivan, no the van blew backwards with the wind alone. <gasps> there are some serious <laughs> conditions out there. Now, of course, we do see storms in the Alps. Yeah, but you just kind of wait around for like a good day. And like here, the axis, it is easier. You don't have to wait in a car park with like sliding ice. Um, and you can just get a lift pass up to what, 3,000, almost 4,000 meters. So I feel the axis is facilitated with all the lift axis. It is, and also just because of the, the terms of, of, of the size of the Alps. Yeah. If you head out into a storm in the Alps, you're far more likely to get yourself into trouble. Of course, you can get into trouble in Scotland. There's numerous incidences of avalanches, people getting lost, you need your navigation skills. But you tend to wait in the Alps for when it's cold, dry, a little bit sunny. And also mainly because if you don't, it, it can be quite miserable. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's switch back to us as we have a little chat. So what we're going to be going through today is the gear that you might need. But Terry, we have done summer alpine gear to death. We've done a whole gear show on packing. Yeah. We went up the Cosmic Sorette. That was fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. Do go and check out that video if you haven't already. But what we're going to be looking at today is the, the differences that you might want to pick between Scottish winter gear and alpine winter gear. But as a caveat here, a lot of the equipment that you use, you can do for both, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, like, it does, a lot of these things do cross into each other. And it's not if you go to Scotland and you're from the Alps, you need to buy total, a total new rack. 
Uh, but you might want to update it and change a little bit because mm -hmm. as the weather change, you need to change your setup. Exactly. Weather, conditions, mm. rock type, all that plays a factor in what equipment you bring up when you go climbing. So what we're going to start off with is what I'm wearing right now, uh, which is a belay jacket. Okay, so a belay jacket. It's an insulated jacket. But Terry, why do we need a belay jacket? Like, What's the, what's the sheer point of having a belay jacket in your equipment Oh, list? it's called belay jacket. Now, so when you get to a belay and you got no idea how long your leader is gonna take, um, you do need to stay warm because again, freezing temperatures like what? This morning was like minus 15 yep. at like a thousand meters. Yep. So you when you go up there and there's wind involved, little storm and everything, you need a warm belay jacket. So this one that you're wearing is called that Thorium uh, AR of Arteryx, obviously. And it's a down and synthetic down jacket. Obviously the down is in the places you need to keep most warm. And then you have synthetic underneath the armpits, on the cufflinks and the hood. <laughs> Because that's where you sweat and you sweat you don't want the, all the down to soak up your sweat because then you'll get cold um, So that's why you have those synthetic patches and uh, It's a great jacket and I know this because I've stolen it a couple of times <laughs> and put it in my backpack But it packs down so small and that's I think an excellent excellent feature with a down jacket um, That you're gonna use it a belay because you do want it maybe in the top slot of your of your backpack and to pull it out real quick and then you have to stuff it back again and you don't really want to think about that it's more of an in and out quick up yeah i've got it on screen now so you can see it. it's on mm. the epic tv shop uh we're selling it around about 330 euros that can fluctuate up and down because yeah. With down and synthetic, there are disadvantages and advantages, right? So the, the advantages of down is that it tends to be incredibly warm for the weight. So it, it, it packs down very small, yeah. it's very warm. The issue is, is that when you get down wet, when you get feathers wet... It takes days, but actually days to get dry again. Yeah, and it, it just doesn't work. It stops working. It just becomes a sort of soggy pillowcase of a jacket. Now, in the Alps, as Terry's covered, that's fine. It tends to be a little bit drier, cold, but drier conditions. Obviously, yeah. that can alter. Whereas in Scotland, it of often, <laughs> in my experiences, nine times uh, out of ten, tends to actually uh, be if it, um, it tends to be wetter. And that's because it's lower in altitude, and therefore, okay. when that weather comes in, it tends to be more sort of misty, rainy, damp. That means that you really want to be looking at a synthetic alternative. And a synthetic alternative that I think is fantastic is what's on screen now, which is called the Proton LT hoodie. Uh, I've got this in green, and I'm pretty sure you've seen gear shows about that in the past. Uh, it's a fantastic jacket. It's hydrophobic synthetic down. It okay. means it's afraid of water. It is a, it's literally afraid of water. It runs away from you uh, when water comes in. <laughs> What I like about this jacket, and I've used it extensively uh, over the last kind of year, year and a half since I've owned it, is the stretchability, the movability in mm. it. And it breathes very well. Yeah. Now that means that you can stick it on in a belay, and then if you want to, if you're cold enough, you can carry on climbing, perhaps you're seconding a pitch where you need a little less motion. Whereas something like this, this big thoreum, it does move, of course, but it's bulkier. Question about this jacket, mm. is it storm hood compatible? Yes. Yeah, that was a good question, sitting on the live chat. Yeah, yeah, it is. This is a, I haven't actually got a helmet on me right now, but at the back, there's this toggle that you can see at the back. Uh, and it is a storm, uh, storm oh, fit yeah. jacket. So you can just one handedly cinch it shut on mm -hmm. the head. And that's the same with the Proton LT that we're looking at now. So two belay jackets, one synthetic, one down. Uh, for that Scotland Alps difference, if that makes sense. Before we continue, Terry, you yes. put up a post on Instagram asking about questions. Can you just tell people where to find that from? It's on Epic TV Climbing and it's in the stories. And we just put up a story asking you guys if you have any questions at all about winter climbing in Scotland or the Alps. 
So ask along. We'll we'll try and answer them. We've been getting a lot of requests about helmet, uh, and Terry, if you don't mind, can I ask go... you just to dash down and grab a helmet from our kit oh, cupboard? It's right there. Oh, it's just right there. <laughs> it's true. Uh, we got a big package delivered from camp uh, this morning because we're going to go ice climbing with them. So there is a pre-ready helmet, uh, and I will show you. We will demo it live on our Instagram uh, chat here about this. I gotta helmet. say, really nice helmets as well. Nice color, isn't it? Uh, no, it's like they're lightweight, they're not bulky, um, they fit quite nicely. Maybe not your head, even your head! It even fits my head. Okay, so I have my uh, very attractive hat on right now. I'm going to be pulling it up over the top. So this is on quite... I can't talk right now, but you can talk for me. Um, as, he, as he demonstrates, uh, it does fit with the helmet compatible <laughs> okay. Good. So this is loose, this is fairly loose uh, on there, and then with one hand I can just reach around and cinch it really, really tight if I wanted to, okay. to kind of compact you in. I think I might do the rest of the live show just like this, I feel like a sort of cool. stormtrooper. My hands are literally frozen, do you mind swapping around the chat? <laughs> I'm going to take this off. Uh, so yes, it is helmet compatible. So yeah, as, as Terry said, if you've got any questions uh, about Scottish winter climbing, about Alps winter climbing, we'll be asking that at the end of the show. But let's crack on with the gear. Uh, and next we're moving on to trousers. trousers. Um, what shall we do first? Alpine trousers. Yeah, let's um, go for the Alpine trouser first, I think. I'm to bring up the Black Diamond liquid pants. So it's... Oops. So it's not uh, a normal trouser, like it's not a soft shell because uh, you probably have that in your closet already and that should be just your pair of go-to pants anyway. Trousers. <laughs> um, but the BD liquid pants is a nice outer shell that you can... Is it on screen? Yep, oh, we're on screen sorry. there. That is the liquid pants. Uh, so... Yeah, the liquid pants. It's just an outer shell, Gore-Tex. Uh, it's super lightweight. It's just like 275 grams and... Uh, I don't know, I picked it because like, again, in the Alps, you don't know what conditions you're gonna run into. And uh, they're not really pants, but they all, they have the feet, they, they have all the features of soft, of a soft shell, of like something just to put on um, afterwards. And there is a zip, it's like a three-way, what, three-way? A third uh, One zip. third, <laughs> one third of a length of zips that you can put your crampons on easily. Um, and yeah, it's just like a nice, safe outer shell uh, to take along. Okay, so here's the scenario, I think. If we put this into a scenario, let's say yeah. you walk to the base of your ice climb or your mixed climb. Okay. The weather is beautiful. It's sunny, you're in your soft shell pants, you've got your long johns underneath, mm. uh, which I particularly like. You're halfway up your route, and at that point it starts to come in. The weather starts to come in. There's a little bit of snow, there's a little bit of yeah. ice, it starts to get wet. Having a pair- You start to get wet. You like start, start to get wet. Soft shells usually aren't like foolproof Gore-Tex anyway. Um, so this is just, yeah, yeah so the you, you, last layer you put on. Yeah, you keep it in your bag, you yeah. take it out, you pull it on quickly, yeah. that one third zip allows you to put it in with crampons, mm. and then you're just a little bit drier, a little bit more protected against the weather. So it's yeah. kind of like a backup if things get nasty. Uh, now, the difference with Scotland, and I keep saying this, but Scotland is generally quite nasty. <laughs> And that means that when you head out, you kind of want that layer on straight away. You want it to be a little bit more hardcore. So my selection uh, is another Arcteryx, which is the Beta AR Pant. Now yours is Gore-Tex Pack Light, yeah. which is Gore-Tex, but it compresses down really small. This is Gore-Tex Pro. Now, if you've ever had anything to do with Gore-Tex, you know that Pro is the most hardcore, resistant, strong Gore-Tex you can possibly get. So this trouser that I'm demoing on screen now is made of full Gore-Tex Pro. Of course, it has got a price tag to match that, 480 mm. euros. But trust me, when you've got freezing cold knees, uh, you're shivering and you're terrified, having that on <laughs> will be worth the money. So when I've Scottish winter climbed before, I tend to put, again, maybe lo uh, long johns, maybe a soft shell, and this just goes on over the top. It's got a big old zip all But the you way would up. start off with these ones. I would start off with those, in, unless you're sort of walking up from the valley, it's beautiful weather and you're sweating, then right. I might put it on as I get to the base or as I get to the snow line. But generally, I kind of want to get ready and packed, ready for that. Mm. So that's two differences in trousers. Uh, of course, 
sometimes when you go out in the outs, you'll want something like a Gore-Tex Pro Outer yeah. as well, especially if the you ice ever know, climbing. Yeah, also if you, have, if you know you have a couple of days to go and you're skiing in and things like that, just why not start with those as well? Exactly. Okay, so two types of trousers. So we've covered tops and bottoms. Uh, do you remember that Hugo's at home looking at the live chat, Terry's keeping an eye on it, and you can go onto Instagram and ask us questions about Scottish winter climbing. Let's just show a pretty picture if you're watching us. Uh, this is the Alps, for example. This is the Alps in fairly wintry conditions taken by David Thexton. Uh, you can see a lot more snow, a lot higher altitude. Uh, there's some pretty good looking climbs up there. Uh, Jonathan Griffiths, uh, fantastic photographer. Again, you can see the difference compared to a sort of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Alice. <laughs> Lovely sunny day. Exactly, right. Let's uh, move on to one of my favourite things, which is ice axes. Uh, what other sport are you allowed to carry around a legal weapon, weapon. and no one is going to stop you doing that? It is, uh, it is pretty useful. Um, and we're going to start off with, we're, we're giving stuff away here, but we're going to start off with a Scottish one this time. Okay. Now, Again, ice axes, you can go between the two. They often overlap and there are a time and a place for both of them. But what we've done is pick two ice axes that you can sort of specifically use for Scottish winter uh, and for ice. And we've defined this by being that Scotland tends to have not quite as much ice. When it is, it's excellent, don't get me wrong. <laughs> it is amazing. But in the Alps, you get more of those big pure ice climbs. Yeah. But for Scotland, I wanted more of a mixed tool. Now, there's, there's differences in the uh, shaft, the curve of the shaft, uh, and with an all-round axe, and what's on screen is the Black Diamond Cobra Ice Axe, it has a slightly less aggressive shaft, and it has a difference in the back. So this section on screen here, that is the adz, or a spade, as, we, <laughs> as I call it. Uh, and you tend to have two axes, one with an adz, a spade, and one with a hammer on it. Why would well, you have these things? Well, this has got the hammer. To hammer in pitons. Yeah, to hammer in pitons, although in Scotland that's a little bit meh. Oh. But to hammer in nuts is a good idea. Uh, to hammer out nuts is a good idea. And the adds that spade can be used to scrape cracks of snow so you can place protection. You can dig bucket belays. There are a whole load of things. I've dug uh, actual bivy spots with my ads chipped away until there's a flat surface that okay. you can lie on it was how big was it it wasn't very big uh, myself and my friends snuggled we spooned it was a wonderful experience oh. i don't want to go on to it here on the live stream okay this is an all-round axe uh what's kind of special about the cobra is it's made with carbon fiber it's only 617 grams which makes it lightweight and because of that carbon fiber the vibrations are limited on it so if you hit a rock by accident or even just a hard bit of ice the vibrations can kind of shudder your way up that ice axe handle with carbon fiber that's dampened a little bit and it makes it just a bit more comfortable uh, mm. to wear the picks can be replaced so you can put a dry tooling specific a t-pick which means you can torque the picks into cracks or you can just go for a pure ice climbing pick I'll be honest, this is a luxury item, the one I've got on screen. This is the Cobra. Carbon fibre, as we know, is not particularly cheap. There are different versions. What you have here uh, is the X All Mountain from Cassin. Uh, not quite as expensive, more of an mm. aluminium shaft. Slightly heavier, slightly different. But of course, there are different options. I'm just gonna take care of the light beam that's coming onto your face. <laughs> oh, there we, there go. we go. Thank you for that. So let's move on to uh, Scottish Ice Axe specifically. And what we thought is, uh, sorry. Alps. Alps. Alps, let's move on to the Alps, where um, you do look forward to more ice climbs or ice is in at the moment. So um, I've picked a bad boy, <laughs> or that's what's written here. <laughs> no, but the BD Fusion, it's like an over the top ice axe, um, but again, Perfect for ice climbing. Just the, um, it's lightweight and uh, uh, it is made of aluminium, so a bit heavier maybe than yours. Mm -hmm. um, but how the weight is distributed, how the shaft is constructed, I can't believe I said that. All that. Anyway, just its angle and weight uh, is designed for ice climbing and to really dig in at that ice. Yeah. The, the um, yeah, sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> the weight distribution, explain that a little bit more because on a normal mixed tool, 
it's quite a balance, like mm -hmm. the weight is throughout the whole thing. But with your eye specific tool, the weight is sort of more towards the head set, more towards the pick. Yeah, it's just because like you need that kind of swing, mm -hmm. you need that stability also in it. Uh, and you know, you never know when you have to build an anchor on two eye socks. <laughs> it's true. It's just, it happens. That, yeah, don't necessary. do that. But. Yeah, so when you swing it, that extra weight in the head that allows yeah. that swing to be easier and harder and more accurate mm -hmm. into the ice. Uh, the Fuel is a cool ice axe. It's one of those ones that mates of mine have that I kind of envy a little bit just because it's such a specific tool. It's a bit of a weapon. But again, like this one, you can change your. Did you just scratch my computer? You can change around uh, the ice pick and the back bit if you want the hammer on it or something like that. Um, and yeah, uh, that's my ice axe. Yeah, again, similar kind of prices. Uh, on the Epic TV shop, you can buy them separately for that price. There are sometimes package deals where you can combine mm. them because often you want two ice axes, not just one. Get two in case you swing one. Yeah, well, because you swing one off. Yeah. My friend once dropped an ice axe into a crevasse uh, and we came down off an ice climb to find the ice axe lying in the middle of a crevasse. Okay, now my, my friend is six foot three. I am five foot eight. He weighs a little bit more than oh, me. No. Between the two of us, I was definitely going to be the one who had to go into that crevasse <laughs> to try to get that ice axe back. So I had to teeter myself, obviously be laid, obviously safe. Uh, so yeah, do try to avoid dropping your ice axes is possible. That's why you bring duct tape though around everywhere. What, to duct tape the ice axe to your hand? No, because <laughs> you can like lower the rope with some duct tape, attach it, make sure it like, I don't know, attaches to the duct tape and pull it back out. <laughs> Uh, please comment if you've ever uh, <laughs> duct taped an ice axe out of a crevasse. I would be fascinated to hear the response that it works. on that one. Um, Wayne is saying, I use the Petzl Nomics for everything. Yes, great all around um, ice axe. Blah, blah, blah. Interchangeable hammer adds and weight picks. Yeah, Wayne, I'll be honest, mate, that's what I do as well. Uh, I used to have a pair of quarks and I still use my quarks. I moved on to Nomics because uh, I just wanted something more aggressive mm -hmm. and I've ended up using my Nomics for most things. It's, it's something about the way it feels for me is great. But if I'm smashing up something sort of long mixed, I will bring my quarks just because they're a little bit lighter and they're just a bit more all round than the Nomic. But Nomic is a fantastic tool. Okay, let's move on to my most terrifying subject, which is... Ice. And ice screws. And ice screws. Okay, let's start with the Alps here. I'm taking a deep, deep uh, breath. Uh, and you've picked the laser light. The Petzl laser light was on the next page. Um, yeah, so I went for the laser lights just because, as we said, in the Alps, you might want to go for an ice climb, a waterfall, um, and you need to bring a couple of them. And they do they can weigh a lot so that's why i picked the petzo laser light there are four available sizes they all come in with a different color um turning screw thingy and um what is the different color turning screw thingy mean it's so, called wait <laughs> So the different colors is because you can, you can look at your call, harness. Yeah, it's basically like color size. coordinated so you know the size that you need, uh, which obviously the, it depends on the ice and on the route you're on and you have to evaluate in that situation. Um, but yeah, they're color coordinated. They're not as durable as obviously the, the not lightweight version, but you know, take care of your of your equipment and it will, la and it will still last you forever. Yeah. Um, the yeah. weight is quite when you have like a rack of let's say five and you have yeah. let's say a normal Petzl express screw mm -hmm. and then you have the laser light express screws when you hold both in your hands the you weight feel a difference. is phenomenal yeah. how much yeah. lighter they are um, and of course in the Alps you're moving up bigger objectives and you've got routes that are often 600 700 meters long yeah. the more you carry the more tired you get the longer it takes the longer it takes you to get to the pub mm. Uh, <laughs> or to important. safety. Well, yeah, to safety, the pub, I mean, yeah, it's all the same. Okay, so I've gone for something slightly different for a Scottish uh, screw. Okay. I wanted something more durable because as we discussed, there is ice in Scotland, it is great, uh, but it tends to be a little bit harder and there tends to be more rocks behind it. With a laser light, if you're smashing it into rocks, it will very, very quickly uh, just sort of get damaged. Whereas the new, and it is brand new, Cassin Rocket Plus ice screw that Teresa has got on her hand there, uh, it's made of a different material. It's slightly more, um, it's slightly more hardcore. And there are some really cool features with this new screw that I want to point out. So 
Both the screws we're talking about have this Speed Express section at the top. So when you put it into the ice, you use this knob to wind the uh, ice screw into the ice, which makes such a difference. If you ever use an old school one, then you'll know uh, how annoying it is to just to twist it by hand. Yeah. It just takes forever, it's terrifying. Really cool feature, there's two really cool features on this. One is this section here of Dyneema cord. Now that eliminates the need to bring quick draws up with you because it's already got a quick draw attached to it. And it's got two attachment points. So there's the bottom one for the, for the uh, carabiner to attach into your rope. And then it's got the top one for the carabiner to attach into your harness. So eliminates the need for extra quick draws. Also what's cool about this is that when you place it into the ice, you can have your rope clipped to it at all times. So you're always attached in until the moment when you pull it out. Exactly. So especially when you're seconding, uh, and let's say you're on a traverse, you don't really want to lose that protection, you're a bit gripped, you're a bit scared, you can keep yourself clipped into that protection all the way to the point when it comes out, mm -hmm. and the same when it goes in. The reason that's good is because occasionally when you're uh, using ice screws, you have to screw it in, take a quick draw, attach the quick draw, get your rope, attach the rope to the quick draw, and then you can carry on climbing, all whilst you're holding on with one hand uh, on, uh, <laughs> on an ice axe. <laughs> uh, with this thing, you don't have to do that. It's really only two motions. You just screw it in and then clip your rope onto it. So that's an impressive bit of kit. Yeah. And we're going to be out testing this quite soon in a future gear show. Ooh, mm. fun. Uh, yeah, fun. You, you say fun. fun. Ice. I don't, yeah, I don't know if I mean it. Yeah, we'll see about <laughs> ice. <laughs> Okay, so we've kind of covered uh, protection at the moment. We're going to move on to more protection. Um, Hard and... bits of gear. Or shall we do a couple of questions first? Should we do a couple of questions? I, I've got one that Hugo's just sent to me about the Cobra. Uh, the one I was oh, talking right, about right, here. Yeah. So let's just quickly go back to the Cobra. Uh, now, the Co what's the difference between the Cobra and the Quark and why is it so much more expensive? Okay, so imagine uh, that there's two types. Imagine we're talking about Petzl and Black Diamond. Mm -hmm. You've got the Quark on Petzl and you've got something called the Viper on Black Diamond. Those two are all round ice axes in that category. Mm -hmm. If you step it up into a certainly more steep ice, dry tooling terrain, you've got the Nomic uh, and then you've got uh, the like the Fusion yeah, or something for yeah. the Black Diamond. So what the Cobra is, is, is the upgraded version of the Viper. Okay. okay, similar design to the all-round ice axe. The reason it's more expensive is to do with that carbon fiber. Like if you've ever seen a, a, like a supercar or a hypercar, they're more expensive than your Ford Fiesta. I'm just gonna say <laughs> walking poles. Carbon fiber walking poles are so much lighter and so much more expensive. It's just like the quality of the material though. And if you have that money to invest, why not? Exactly, it's a choice. Uh, you do have to look after them a bit more, but it's, yeah, mm. that vibration. If you twat an ice axe or you hit an ice axe into something hard, the vibration yeah. is less on a carbon fiber mm -hmm. one. Okay, let's move on to protection. <laughs> we're getting through this, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna move on to protection and we're gonna start with hexes. Now, if you're a bit new school, let's say you've just started climbing, you might not have heard about a hex that Teresa is demonstrating here. A hex is a bit like a giant nut. But it's hollow, so it's lighter. Do you want to? Oh, am I going with it? You okay. go for it. You go for it. Um, well, we picked it more for Scottish climbing because, again, you might hit more rock. Yeah. So this was my one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I totally sandbagged you. Okay. <laughs> so why would you pick a hex? Well, you pick a hex because uh, what hexes tend to do is they tend to overlap the criteria of a cam. So the size and the shape of that hex is very similar to the size and the shape of a cam. Uh, the problem with Scotland is the cracks tend to get a lot more icy uh, than in the Alps. And the problem with icy cracks is that cams have less friction and they can slide out of that crack easier. With a hex, it's passive, it's just jammed in there, and because of the size of it, it can wodge in the same place. You can also hammer a hex in with our hammer, it will stay and it's a good bit of protection. The disadvantage is they're quite bulky. Uh, they're not particularly heavy, but they are a bit bulky. So I tend to only use them in Scotland. Whereas, if we're looking at um, uh, Alps Alpine winter climbing. protection, you reckon more cans? Uh, not these. I'd go for the Black Diamond Ultralight ones because they are 25% lighter than these. Um, and yeah, I mean, 
you want to be fast and light because uh, less weight is more speed and you do need to be speedy in the Alps. Um, and yeah, maybe like in Scotland, because of the, what is it called? Ice glass uh, on the rock, it's not as safe to put a cam in. And instead in the Alps, you might get more rock and it's still safe to place cams. And it's just like that extra bit of gear you have anyway. Yeah, and being the ultra light, 25% lighter than the yeah. C4, that makes, again, a big difference. If you've got laser lights and you've got ultra lights on your harness, you're you super light, you'll float up because of the gear. Exactly, it waltz up those routes. Yeah. Uh, so that's a few examples. Now, of course, there's a whole load of protection with Bose in Scotland. You've got warthogs, you've got things you can put into uh, frozen turf. We're just highlighting two which are quite different. I would take hexes to Scotland, I would take uh, cams to the Alps. That's my personal preference anyway. Wayne is asking, what are these called again? Uh, that is, I'll bring it back up on screen, that is the Casson, Cassin Rocket Plus Ice Screw. It's brand new in the Epic TV shop, uh, around about 80 euros for the larger 16 version. The 13 version comes in at pretty much the same price, 80 euros. So you can get them in two sizes. Uh, and it's, it's pretty cool and we will be testing this in the future, so stay tuned for a gear show coming up soon. Okay, we're going to be quick, but the last thing is harnesses. Oh, right. Um, well, why can you not wear your normal harness up in the Alps? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely can is the question. Uh, and again, most people tend to use one harness for most things. Um, but again, we're just highlighting some differences. In the Alps, you can approach by skis a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna be a bit faster and lighter and you perhaps don't want such a bulky harness. And you'll probably be going to carrying less gear than if you were in Scotland. As we said, hexes, super big, super bulky on a harness. So for my Scottish harness, I have picked the Camp Impulse CR. It's reasonably priced, 67 euros 50 on the Epic TV shop. It's got adjustable leg loops, adjustable waist belt, and that means that if you're wearing lots of clothes, because it's Scotland and it's miserable, that means it will fit on over the top of multi, multi layers. What I especially like about the Impulse CR is the size of the gear loops. Mm -hmm. They're massive, they're semi-rigid, they're easy to get to your equipment, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's just a nice, solid, comfortable harness uh, for belaying, uh, for climbing in, and for racking gear. But we went something a bit different for the Alps harness. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking in the Alps, like you said, most of the approaches are by ski, and you do want something that you're not gonna feel because you're gonna, you're gonna have it on the whole day. So I went for this blue ice Addex harness and it's just 139 grams. So it's the heaviest as quick draw. So super, super light. Again, four gear loops. So definitely enough for a whole rack. Um, and it's apparently very comfortable uh, regardless of the weight. But what I noticed compared to your harness, it doesn't have adjustable leg loops, mm. which can be an issue with all the layers you have to take on and off. Yeah, and also going for a pee, more difficult if you're a girl. Not gonna come. Like, it's... I mean, how do you, I don't even know how, because the good thing with an adjustable <laughs> leg loop is you can take those legs fully off, uh, trousers down, do what you have to do. Um, whereas with something like this, you're gonna have to take the harness off, which is a bit yep. of a disadvantage. Yeah, it's a bit of a disadvantage, but don't drink. No, I'm joking, <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good tip. I don't don't hydrate and you don't need to pee. <laughs> Excellent advice from Terry, you could uh, ride to her on that one. Blue Ice is a brand. We drive past it almost every day on the way to work. It's all made here in Chamonix, designed and tested. No, yeah, so obviously they know what they're doing. The people themselves know what they need in the Alps. Um, so yeah, great harness if you're considering to go ice climbing in the Alps or even in Scotland. Yeah, exactly. So you, you can use all of this equipment for everything, of course. Okay, so now it becomes uh, the part of the show where you guys can ask questions. Uh, can I ask? I think we should go to the Instagram questions that people asked. Good more because my computer is dying. <laughs> So we guys asked you to send in questions on Instagram. You can still do that right now. If you, if you do it right now on the story, uh, we will be able to see and watch uh, what you're doing. And while Terry's finding a question, someone asks about, uh, is Patagonia worth the money? Um, good question. We wear a lot of Arcterics, as you know. Uh, I feel like that is worth the money at the same time. Terry, you've got a Patagonia jacket. <laughs> I'm so cold, I'm just gonna <laughs> pop this on. Yeah, I got a Patagonia down jacket, and that's my favorite thing ever. So yes, it's worth the money. Yes, it's, expen it's expensive. Uh, but do your research before buying anything. 
I, I, some of, this is an obvious thing, but someone once told me, like, buy once. And that is a really mm. good point, I think, because the amount of times I have skimped on something and immediately broken it, realised it's not good enough, sometimes you need to spend a bit of cash and there are certain items that are worth it. And I do think clothing is one of them. As you know, we wear our Terry stuff all the time. Terry's Patagonia there. This jacket gets used and abused. There's nothing wrong with it. So yeah, I would agree with you. Worth the money uh, if you have it to spend. Mine has a couple of things wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move on to the questions from Instagram. First one, is fast and light always right? Yes. Come on. Okay, I'll expand on that. Like, you and me have been climbing a bit. Like, how aggressive am I at the fast and light? You're so annoying. <laughs> uh, no, but like, yes, it is better to go fast. Uh, I don't know whether light is the option to go. Um, but then again, if you have like an extra half kilo or a kilo, you should be able to carry that anyway. Yeah, I mean, the lighter you are, the faster you go. The faster you go, the safer you are. So yes. The only time I'd say that isn't... The only time i say that isn't the case is if you've got... So let's say you're going to Scotland and you've got the flimsiest, lightest of gear and you're smashing it into cracks. You're Don't expect it, yeah. it to last. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sometimes you want something a little bit more beefy, I'd say. Okay, lockdown alpine training tips, please. Last year, a series on Rab YouTube channel came out and it was like a six-part series, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and it was just like tutorials home tutorials you can train to um all specifically to ice climbing and winter climbing so check that out that's the only thing i can think about there are for sure some things on the epic tv, sh on the epic TV website though yeah like like winter generally it's a fitness thing to yeah be honest. it's like it, it's my mate once described uh, alpine climbing as going on a stairmaster for three hours whilst carrying a backpack mm. it is that there is a grind <laughs> in there and i always find that if i enter an alpine climbing season and i'm as fit as humanly possible that everything just becomes comes easier of course there's the upper body stuff you can do but if you've got strong legs if you're cardioly fit if that's a word then uh, yeah you'll struggle a lot cardio less. fit who's asked these questions as well can we shout oh, them out oh okay bit? um oh we will for the next one we'll shout out for the next one all right um okay what's what's the coldest temperature in the alps whatever ever registered um i looked it up earlier actually it said minus 33 in davos is that's in switzerland but that's also a city so it's not up in the heart of the alps yeah wind chill will certainly add something to it yeah it? um yeah. I, i've i've experienced like i've climbed in like minus 15 before that's about as cold as i'd ever want to climb in um scotland can really vary and wind chill does make a huge difference but generally you're going to be looking at temperatures below zero because otherwise the ice starts to melt so uh take zero as your baseline and go down celsius on it is yes sorry celsius yeah um ta -ta 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 -ta. okay what would be a good pair of boots for scottish winter mountaineering warmth is the key on so that like so there are like different ratings on the boots. Shall we pull up something from the Epic TV store? Uh, I haven't got anything set, set up. Okay. But like you, you're talking about B2, B3. Yeah. Okay. So like that's to do with the stiffness of the sole, the B2, the B3. No, I meant the warmth. Oh, yeah. warmth wise. Yeah, like you can get some, so, so off the top of my head, something like the Phantom 6000. Mm -hmm. The Phantom 6000 is a, a boot with a built-in big gaiter that okay. comes all the way up. It's very, very warm. Whereas you get something more like, let's say, the... Uh, God, I can't even think of a boot now. So the... the uh, That's the Scarpa one. There's the La Sportiva one. Yeah, La Sportiva Trango, Trango, let's say. That's a B2 boot, lightweight, doesn't have that built-in gaiter, doesn't have the warmth. Generally, I think I would always go for a warmer boot overall, especially if you're winter climbing. Uh, obviously, that's a disadvantage in summer if you want to use your boot for all seasons. But personally, I feel like the warmer you go, the better, because having cold feet is so miserable if you're trying to climb. However, uh, Will Gad, mm -hmm. super alpinist, ice climber, blah, 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 wrote an Instagram post about keeping warm feet. And... Go check that out. It it's recently on his Instagram, but basically he also talks about uh, heating so like heater socks, like electric heating socks. Oh yeah, it's quite tacky and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's maybe like an upgrade you can do to your kit without having to change boots. That is very true. Yeah, upgrade your socks and then to upgrade your boot. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what they go hand in hand. Anyway, um, another question from from. 
Another question from Lucas1309. He says, what do I need and how much do I need to invest to try rent possible? He's talking cool. about just the gear for, I guess, Alps or, or Scotland. Yeah, that's you a can, piece of string, isn't it? Yeah, you can rent most, not most of the gear. You can, you can rent like, um, you can rent shoes, helmets, backpacks. You can rent a bunch of things. But I think if you're trying it out for the first time, you will go with a friend or with a mountain guide. So they'll bring the kit or they'll have part of the kit. Yeah. Uh, it is an investment though. I, I would say if you had to buy one thing, buy boots. Because uh, mm -hmm. renting boots, they never quite fit right. Your boots are gonna last you for years and years and years. I, I would say the first thing you're looking to buy if you're getting into winter climbing or just alpine climbing is invest in a good pair of boots and build everything around that. All right, shall we do one last question about crampons? Yeah, go for it. Allora, Harry. <laughs> allora. Harry asks, any crampons preferences when climbing? Mono points or double points? Light, light or not for both? I have had a few friends who poons have broken on routes in Scotland. Pons, pons. like crampons. Crampons, pons, poons, lele poons. <laughs> Um, so yeah, monopoint, double points. Are monopoints for like um, dry tooling? Okay, so let's just talk about the differences. So okay. dual points, two points at the front, and they tend to either be horizontal or vertical. A horizontal point uh, is better for walking on glaciers, whereas vertical points cut into ice better. So there's a difference in the type of mm. points that you want. If you want an all-round crampon, go for ver uh, horizontal. If you want more of an ice climbing technical crampon, go for vertical. Mono points is when the things step up a bit in terms of technicality. It's just one spike in at the front. That's easier to kick into hard, steep ice. So if you're into hard, steep ice, that's the way to go. And as Terry said, dry tooling, when you get little cracks or little pockets that you have to put in. Just be so precise. You can be so precise. Now there are various brands. Petzl, for example, have just brought out their new range where you can swap, you can interchange those front points. So you can change it between dual points and a mono point depending on what you want to do. But if you just start off at one to get I would go for the dual point and then I'd see the kind of climbing you do and then look to see if you need a mono point in the future <laughs> all righty my computer died all right your computer died but I've still got some questions <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys are watching uh, and joining us we've been talking about gear all day we've been talking about Scottish winter climbing and Alps and the differences and the types of equipment that you need between the two uh, someone's asking me Matt have you used tricams for winter what's your thoughts oh I love tricams. Do you? Why do you love tricams? I mean, I wish I had a whole rack of tricams. Because it's not a cam, it's not a knot, it's something in between that's beautifully designed and I just I just think they work. Okay, so you're I a I don't fan. know, I just, I'm an uber fan. I've tried them like a couple of times and since then I, I tried to get a rack, but they're like difficult to find. Yeah, they are. Like they? they're... <laughs> I don't know why they're like well because only one brand only camp make them uh can I try cams yeah but yeah I, I think generally like I, I personally haven't used them for winter climbing so I don't know but I'd say my advice about iced up cracks are the same for dry cams just be careful with iced up cracks mm. it's the same as when cams don't really work as well in limestone mm. because it's just a slippery surface yeah. there's less friction yeah. so always be aware of that it doesn't matter how good your cam is if it's icy it won't hold as much so do be careful of that one. But that's um, why it's tricam, because it's also a knot. It yes. slots in like a knot. True, that is true. Like, um, what else? There is a question in Instagram that I don't really understand, but Aki.ak asks, shell layer, 2.5 vis three layers. Uh, is this like the layer system, like base layer, mid layer, shell? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'll tell you what, I, we'll, we'll maybe go through what we wear. Okay, yeah. Um, so I tend to have, okay, this is me, I tend to have base layer, I then tend to go for maybe another long sleeve t-shirt on over the top of that, I then go for a, a, a mid layer, and it either tends to be something like a fleece, a soft shell, uh, or occasionally a very thin synthetic down jacket, a bit similar to the one you're wearing. No, this is real down jacket. Yeah, but like, a, well, I'm talking about like <laughs> no, thin one, you know, like the nano puff from Patagonia, yeah, sure. something like that. Then I go for a hard shell on over the top, and then I have in my bag my belay jacket for when things get really cold. And I t and on my legs I go for sort of long johns, and then either a Gore-Tex layer or a soft long shell Long johns layer. are leggings, right? Leggings, exactly. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs>
Anything else or are we about um, done for this one? Best place for Scottish mountain, uh, for best place for Scottish winter mountain. I would, because you haven't done... I haven't been to Scotland. Okay, so I would recommend that you go to Aviemore. Uh, it's a little town up in Scotland. It's like a little hub for climbing. There's supermarkets, there's youth hostels you can see. And there's an area called Schnecta, the northern quarries. Uh, quarries sorry. Uh, it's not a bad walk-in in Scottish standards. It's about an hour, maybe a bit more if you're trudging. It's a good place to start. And in Aviemore, because there's a lot of outdoor shops, there's a lot of local knowledge, that is a good place to start if you're new to Scottish winter climbing and in the Alps yeah. Terry if you had to recommend where would you go I mean we're Chamonix based we're obviously we're going to be a bit biased <laughs> come to Chamonix we have the tallest peaks in Europe um Chamonix or it's just another hub in Europe maybe uh in Austria or in Switzerland in the Oberalps that's not how you say it <laughs> uh but yeah Chamonix Chamonix is the place to be come on we got lifts not that they're functioning right now. Yeah, right now, less so. But yeah, generally, that lift access is pretty special. Okay. I feel like we've talked a long <sighs> time to, to you guys. Uh, oh, I do have one last question, actually. Oh, go for it, good. go for it. Uh, it's from Emma Warner. Mm -hmm. um, and she asks, what's your recommended rope for ice climbing? So that's something we haven't touched at all mm -hmm. on. But um, for ice climbing, well, you need something uh, fully waterproof. Mm -hmm. Treatments are important. Treatments are important. Something light, you usually carry around two ropes anyway. So half ropes, triple rated. Yeah, th there are ice line specific ropes. So, and it's different from a half rope. So with a half rope that like you'd normally trad climb, you can clip them separately and kind of get away with it yeah. if they're loaded. With ice lines, you have to clip them at the same time. So why not just bring up oh, one twin rope? Ropes. Twin oh, ropes. Twin ropes, exactly. Ropes. So why not just bring up one rope? Well, because if you have to abseil, you can tie those ropes mm. together and abseil all the way down. So do look for ice lines on the Epic TV shop. We've got a few of them in there, uh, and that's probably the place to start. I know we said one more, but I've got one okay. more, one more, one more. Uh, gloves. Oh. Now, we didn't do gloves because it's such a minefield. There are so many options. Yeah. But I think there's some general rules. You want your fingers to get. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, I'd honestly recommend mittens, like the thumb and the big. For belaying, oh. yeah. Yeah. For climbing, maybe not, because you want a bit of that dexterity. No, but get something with leather because it's just going to last you forever. And they are more yeah. expensive, but... And again, buy once. Leather palm, for sure, as Terry said. You can get Gore-Tex gloves, you can get insulated gloves. Uh, one tip I would say is that you want, I, I tend to take three pairs of gloves up when I go climbing. I have one pair of mitts for the approach because you just want to be warm on that approach. You don't want to get cold before you get to the climb. I then sometimes belay in those mitts or sometimes I'll have a bigger pair of uh, normal gloves. Um, and you can use that for seconding because you can remove the gear easily. However, if things get tough, what you don't want to be doing is fiddling around with gear with a big thick pair of gloves on. Therefore, if you bring a slightly thinner pair for the leads, mm. so something more of a dry tooling glove, just a thinner glove, yes, you might get a bit colder, but you're going to be climbing, so your hands are going to warm up. Yeah. You then climb the pitch, you can place gear easily. When you get to the belay, immediately swap those gloves out, shove them down your jacket, keep them warm, stick on your belay gloves, stick on those bigger single gloves, uh, and then you hopefully won't get as cold as quick. That's my recommendation. Oh, okay. what a show. What a show. I just want to go climbing now. I know, all this chat, I just want to get out there. <laughs> yeah. uh, guys, thank you so much for watching this live show. Hopefully that's answered some of your questions. It is the time, we're in January. It's now time for winter climbing. Uh, it's frozen, there's snow. It's literally frozen, my car, minus 15 this morning. Not a good place to be. Uh, get out there, be safe out there. And as always, we would recommend that you either get a guide or you climb with friends who are extremely knowledgeable. Things can go wrong very quickly. And wear a transceiver. But we haven't spoken about that today. But there are transceivers on the Epic TV shop. Yeah. So if you're out in an avalanche area, do you pay full attention to avalanche bulletins and all the rest and keep as safe as possible out there if you can. Cheers for that, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank if you're you. watching us retrospectively, uh, this has been a long gear show. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've given you some knowledge. All of the equipment that we've talked about today is linked down below in the description. Uh, there's a big page of Alpine stuff, so you can go through and sift through the gear available on the Epic TV shop. And there are bargains going on right now, so make sure you get out there as soon as possible. All right, guys, that's it for us. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a wonderful Thank you. weekend. Yeah, you too, guys. Go climb.